All right, of welcome back for the episode of Carnivore Trades. Today is Tuesday, December 19th, 2023. If you're not done so already, please give the video a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Come find me on carnivoretrades.com for swing trading alerts, analysis, and live day trading. Anyways, let's get into it today. So markets here um, having another rally. And um, I did tweet about this earlier but you know 47.65 was likely going to be a max move intraday and that's kind of where we went i'm doing this video a little early uh you know maybe we exceed it by a few points by the end of the day but um that's kind of capped the rally here for the last three four hours um and markets right now are still acting well now i will say here um a couple of things so volume right now is very light on the spiders um, <clears throat> we're at just about 37 million, 38 million shares here at 3.17 p.m. So there's no volume. It's totally holiday mode here. So shorting this is uh, probably a fruitless endeavor, um, even into double top. I noticed earlier this morning, there's, uh, it looked like there were some traders trying to short the queues in front of double top here. Um, I, I don't recommend doing that here in this environment. If this was, you know, April or something, some other month, it doesn't matter where there's no holidays and there's a heavy trading volume, we could probably get away with that, but um, it's not a good idea to do that here in, in this seasonal period here. Uh, there was a record inflow again into the SPY ETF uh, this week. I think it was like 10 billion um, the other day. And there was like another 5 billion, I think, the day before that. Um, this is collateral reinvestment, end of year stuff, pension funds being forced to buy, stuff like that. Um, fund managers chasing to meet their benchmark. This is the type of thing that happens around this time period, um, especially when you have a 15% move in six weeks. Yes, 15%. It's a historic move. Um, and we're not likely to see these types of moves very often. Um, so again, I don't think that um, that's a good idea. But I will say this is not healthy. Um, and it's getting more and more unhealthy the more we pump up here without consolidation. And um, these things tend to end pretty violently. So um, again, that doesn't mean we're going to melt down to 3200. But it does mean that we could see a very steep correction. Um, and it's it, this is very much reminding me of 2017 to 2018. In fact, I think we got to go back further here. Um, and same time period too. So where we had this big melt up and then you had that vertical move at the end, the blow off move. This is feeling a lot like that. Um, obviously, it's a little bit similar. We had a nice pullback here to, to, to launch that. Um, but it's definitely getting, we're definitely getting stretched here. This markets need to pull back here if this is going to be a sustainable move. Otherwise, we're going to probably have a pretty steep correction at some point. Um, I am not expecting that right now. Um, I think at most you see 4,700 by the year end, you know, maybe 4,690, something like that. Um, that would actually be healthy. There would actually be nothing wrong with that. Let the 20 moving average catch up. And then I think you could get another, you know, potential move into January. But um, right now, just so it's said, this market's getting really stretched. I thought there was a possibility of a turnaround Tuesday. Again, yesterday I talked about the Qs. Obviously, we made new all-time highs today um, in the triple Qs and the NDX uh, officially. Um, and, I, and I thought there might have been a possibility where we could have both, right? Where we kind of, maybe we gap up and we, we ramp for the first 15 minutes. We make that new all-time high and then maybe get a turnaround Tuesday. Um, and then just start a pullback here, just a consolidation, nothing special. Um, but, you know, just kind of something to digest this move. That is obviously not the case. Could that be the case tomorrow? It's certainly possible. But at this point, <clears throat> shit, we're this close to all-time highs. I mean, you got to think that maybe the SPX can just take it there, right? Um, you know, I said that, um, you know, going into this week, I was like, you know, I think maybe the Qs will make all-time highs and the, the spiders, the SPX will just kind of chop around, maybe make a slight new high and then pull back. And then I think you make the new high, new official high in, you know, January, something like that. But now at this point, we're 50 points away. So let's just say we float up today, tomorrow. And we, we could even be flat tomorrow. We could float up Thursday. Friday's PCE, they could just gap it up, right? Um, I mean, and, and it's like, yeah, we're, we're getting more and more overbought, but See, we're already overbought. You might as well do it, right? So um, that's a possibility. Another possibility is they, 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 get it, they get it close and then they pull the rug. 
that could certainly be the case too. But my, my bigger picture here though, this has to pull back. Otherwise we're at risk of a volatility event in the future. That's bottom line. Um, again, that's not likely to happen before Christmas or even before New Year's. Um, but just be aware of that. This is getting extremely unhealthy um, on the charts here. And even the Dow, I mean, the Dow is supposed to be the slowest mover. This has been, this has been parabolic for weeks now. Um, and the, you know, Dow is at an all time high here up another half percent on the day. So these are, this move is starting to get unhealthy here. We see the cues there at 408.70. So new all time high and that's acting well. If it pulls back um, again, by the end of the year, we'll just look at 400 and we'll just make it simple there. Um, IWM here <clears throat> up 2% on the day. So that's new 52 week high for the Russell 2000. Um, still below the eight, uh, excuse me, August 16th pivot from 2022. Um, that will likely be some resistance. And then you've got this, uh, this other pivot at 205. So maybe the Russell could see a little bit more upside here. Again, it's squeezing up. And that's really what's going on right now. Nothing to say it can't go higher, but those are the next levels here. We'll say 202 and then 205 for the IWM here. Um, semiconductors acting well, up a quarter of a percent, still inside of this topping tail. Um, I don't really love it as a topping tail. I prefer a longer wick and more volume. We don't have either of those, but it could mark a short-term top, right? Um, would we, you know, if we pull back again, I said 165 yesterday, that's probably a good area. Um, the socks here, um, we'll just say 3,900, your previous all time high. Um, then if you get through that, it's 38 and 37 and so on. But, um, again, semis acting well here and, uh, Broadcom still keeps going. Oh, actually, well, Broadcom working on a red day. So it was green earlier. We'll see if they manage to close that red today. Um, AMD, uh, AMD still green although a little bit of a tail candle there as well. So again, semis acting well. I know NVIDIA was down earlier, but nothing terrible. Um, IGV continuing to push up. So that was up another half percent. Remember, um, you're coming into all these pivots now. Again, I still think it's gonna need to do some pulling back here, but again, we're melting up and that's just the kind of environment we're in. Um, so again, I'll just say 410 is kind of your next level there for cloud software, but that has uh, been a powerhouse lately. Uh, Dow Transport's here also. On the positive side, I still think that can get to 15,250, maybe 15, excuse me, 16,250, maybe 16,3. It is still a little overbought here, um, just like everything, but um, that's kind of what the pattern suggests. And um, that's kind of your area right there. So transport's also holding up. And uh, again, we'll leave it at that for now. All right. Um, so let's look at yields. So two year here, um, basically flat on the day, nothing really terrible going on. I do like this level for the uh, 425. I've talked about that. I don't know if we're going lower than that on the two year. So um, watch this. I'm keying more off the 10, um, but that's a very interesting level that we hit on the two. Maybe we could go to 415, you know, one more divergent low. That's kind of what I'm expecting for yields here. Um, see the five year setting up possible immature bear pattern. So it could be setting up for one more drop. I think I told you guys 375. I still expect that um, 10 year, same thing, immature bear pattern starting. So um, it could be continuing. Um, but again, right in this area here, and then the 30 year, same thing, could be one more drop here, but um, that's really it. That's really all the downside I'm seeing for yields uh, right now is possibly one more divergent low. And then um, I think yields are gonna surprise a lot of people in the next quarter. Um, XHB here up one and a quarter. Um, that can still go higher. Next level is just a hundred bucks. I'll leave it at that. Um, if it pulls back, we'll say 87. Uh, VNQ um, got to that 90 handle. Nice pullback. Remember the weekly level we gave out right into that 200 and 100 and it's pausing there. So it needs to pull back um, a lot of resistance overhead and that's what it's doing right now. See, this is much healthier than what the spiders are doing, right? So even though it's had a parabolic move, at least it's pulling back for a few days and um, I'd like to see this type of price action for the markets, honestly. Um, but again, um, the market does what it wants. You know, you got to trade the market we have, not the one we want, right? Anyways, XLF um, up another 60 base points. Even this still parabolic, um, but it's at least below that pivot. And you're kind of just backing off here. Let that moving average catch up and then you can go higher. I still think, uh, I think 38 and a quarter. Yeah, that's going to be the next big level there. Um, down move pivot and this was your big breakdown again if we go to a weekly this was a point of control for you know like seven eight months and uh, we broke through it there's your pivot high so that's where the sellers are going to be sitting 
um, waiting to unload. But XLF, again, still holding up. KRE still holding up. That can still get to 56. Um, KBE, I'm just going to say 48 and a quarter. So that can still get up there if that consolidates. But um, Finn's still acting well. Broker-dealers, new all-time highs every day, right? <laughs> so 550 there. Um, we'll just say six 600 uh, even on, on XPD. Um, again, parabolic needs to pull back, but um, you know nothing to say. It can't go higher when you had an all-time high. All right, over to commodities here. Crude having a nice day. So crude is interesting right here. So that was up 2%. I don't know if this wants to make, I'll be honest with you, I don't know if this wants to make a one more lower low. If it does, I'd probably be all over it. Um, I do think it wants to pull back here. It's just a matter of do we put in a low or not? Um, <clears throat> but it has firmed up and you're back above the 20 and you're going to close above the 20. We're not going to count this day. That doesn't count. This is closed by cents, pennies above that. First close above the 20 since the 19th of October. Um, and the first, last time you were established above it was all the way back here in late September. Um, so, you know, that's just like a rounding error right there. This is a decisive close. Um, not above yesterday's high, but I like how you pulled back in. Sellers came in and it's popping right back up. Another thing about crude too, um, the shorts, the speculative shorts are getting a little ahead of themselves on it. Um, they're starting to build up here. So I can see the potential for a, a powerful move here and um, little... Uh, I guess a little freebie kind of insight that talk to members about here, but I think it's going to line up with yields. So um, we're kind of looking for commodities to make a move here uh, in the next quarter, but um, <clears throat> crude acting well, could have a pullback here, you know, could have one more spike down. It wouldn't rule it out, but um, 75 still resistance. Um, and if this um, pushes up and go to 80. Um, so again, I'm still kind of neutral ish, but um I'm looking to get bullish here if we can get the right setup, potentially. XLE, uh, I'm still leaving that alone. That's up 1% on the day. I don't really like the pattern on it. Uh, currently, same thing with XOP, but these charts looked a little bit better um, over the last couple of days. OIH, I like this one the best out of the bunch. Nice little inside bar there, potentially, on the OIH. I would still like it. If we could get one more flush, that would be amazing. But, um, you know, it doesn't always happen. Anyways, uh, CCJ, nice outside move down. Um, maybe finally they're done buying this thing. Maybe they turn the algos up. You know, maybe, you know, I talked about the fund managers going on vacation before Christmas. They're going to be gone. Um, and maybe they finally got done chasing this thing <laughs> and, uh, before the end of the year. I talked about that as well. Look at what you just did today. This is one day. 17th of November. You just wiped out all of that in one day here on CCJ. Um, now again, the weekly trend is still up. There's no real problems. You could go to 4250 and hold that level. You could go to the 20 week moving average and hold that level and then curl back up. But, um, very interested to see where this ends the month too, because this is three, six, seven, eight months in a row up. Um, and that could finally mark a pullback. I told you guys 45, we pierced it, you know, again, this could still put in a higher low and go to 50, but I, I think Quarter one, it's probably, and you got volume upticking here too. Um, quarter one, um, I think it's probably time for this to correct here. But, um, you know, it's had an amazing run and can't take anything away. URNM, a little bit of a, a little bit of weakness there as well, down four and a quarter. This thing is very volatile. But again, trend is up here. And I like this chart much better than CCJ for another advance, just because this is, you had a nice consolidation here and you're, you get a little peak above, and then you're, you still got an inside bar here on the weekly. Whereas CCJ is just, you know, like just overbought to overbought to overbought, whereas URNM is actually building that base, so to say. Anyways, Nat Gas here, um, interesting day. Uh, dipped down early and then popped right back up. It's actually bidding up right now um, in the Comex after hours. Futures are still open, obviously. A um, little bit of a test candle. So again, I talked about this being quarterly OPEX related, and I think that's exactly what it was. Um, it, do you notice how they released some like report about the weather is like better than expected? Um, and so then that equates to a 15% drop in two days, apparently. Um, it's just the type of stuff you see around quarterly OPEX. But in any case, a little test candle today, um, testing, the you know, flushing out some buyers potentially and um, a nice reversal here. So again, if I can get through 262, I'd say about 280 and then three bucks are your levels there for net gas. 
This could be interesting as well um, with oil and yields, but we'll talk about that more um, as we get closer. I mean, the end of the year here, things are going to be quiet. Um, but I think there's a lot of interesting developments coming up in the not too distant future. Anyway, here's the dollar. Um, I think it's going to get through that trend line. Um, maybe even a pierce of that slight lower, you know, 101, 101, 10 area. Um, and then we'll watch the dollar, but, um, right now it's, it's, it's backing off. And again, the markets like that. Um, and the yen, like I said yesterday, um, it was a nothing burger, right? So they tried to pop the dollar versus the yen, um, and they did. But if you look at, and I talked, I talked about this in the trading room this morning. Um, where is it? I think this is three. I believe that was the candle where they, where the BOJ made their announcement. Oh no, sorry. It was right there. That was it right there. Right, so they didn't. Markets don't care right now. There's no participation. Don't fight this. Anyways, uh, gold here getting a nice bounce today, up 61 basis points. Not a terrible pattern starting on the daily, um, but I don't see a lot of downside in the dollar. That's kind of my knock on it right now. I do think the dollar can make one more divergent low. Maybe gold r rallies up again, but trust me when I say there's a lot of supply in that candle. Um, same thing with silver, but we'll watch these for pattern and. Um, you know, metals are, I think, can have a run as well, but, um, you know, all depends on timing and everything. Anyways, platinum, uh, that looks good. Um, you guys know I've been talking about this for a while. I've got the green light on that. Uh, I've got the green light on palladium as well, which I own, um, full disclosure, via Sprott. So um, I like the uh, alternate precious metals here very much so, and I've been talking about that quite a bit lately. I think this is a major bottom in palladium. Um, and I really like that. Probably gets up to 1300 here in the near term and then uh, may need to do some backhand filling. Anyways, copper here had a nice pop earlier then came off the highs, still up one and three quarters. Again, it's just up, give it the upside bias to $4 from now and then we'll leave it at that. Uh, Bitcoin still acting well, no problems here. I did hear some news that, um, I, I can't remember exactly what it was, but they have until the 10th of January or something like that to approve the ETF. And it looks like they're they're betting that it's going to get done. So I would expect Bitcoin is gonna be in a range until then. It's certainly not gonna sell off unless somebody gets inside info that it's going to be unapproved, right? So that would obviously make sense. Um, <clears throat> but right now, I don't really see any problems. I can still get to 48K. And um, my thoughts on the matter are is, like everyone's asking, when's it gonna pull back? It, you're gonna get the news to come out it's going to get approved. It's going to pop $3,000 in five seconds, and then it's going to correct. That's kind of my, um, you know, forecast for it, but we'll see what we get um, moving forward. And again, I don't really see any issues with it right now. You see what we saw ETH, a little bit of, you know, daily lower highs, lower lows there. So some of the alts kind of coming in. We talked about Doge yesterday, um, Litecoin, a little bit of weakness. Solana still looks good to me. I think that's the best of the bunch right now. Um, but in any case, I think Bitcoin remains mostly range bound until that news comes out. Anyways, um, so again, markets here. So just stuck below that uh, 47.65 area. That was a gamma wall earlier. Um, we'll see what we get going into tomorrow. Do they want to melt this thing up a little bit further? It's certainly possible. Things are getting a little lofty out there. Um, fear and greed. You know, that's 79. Um, and six weeks ago, we were at extreme fear. So <laughs> pretty quick moves. Um, just be aware of that. This is not a healthy move. I would like to see the markets pull back in. Um, but uh, nothing to say it can't go higher when you get into euphoria. And I'm not looking for a big move to the downside in front of Christmas. They worked really hard to prop this thing up. Notice how when BTFP came out, that was the day we made the low. They worked really hard to do that stuff all year long. They're not going to let it crash before Christmas. Um, so just be aware of that. Anyways, guys, I'm going to wrap up here. You guys take care. Come find me on counterfortrades.com, and I'll talk to you guys all tomorrow.